Are celebrating Epiphany today, which is the day the wise men came and saw Jesus. They finally got there after their very long journey. Yeah. I had a few questions about stars for you today. Um, did you know that stars can actually be born um, and that they're created? In the Milky Way, which is the galaxy we live in, one new star is produced every year. But there is a galaxy that scientists have found that is a super mom. It produces about 740 new stars every year, which is crazy considering our galaxy only produces one. Do you think that the Magi actually happened to find this one new star and that's what they saw? Because we don't actually know what star is the star of Bethlehem. Could it have been two stars kind of intersecting? Like we had two planets intersecting this year and this Christmas and it made it super bright because they were right beside each other and it made like for a really bright star. Do you think that is something that the Magi could have seen? Or maybe it was a comet or a supernova, which is what happens when a star dies is really pretty. I wonder, what do you think? I am going to read the story um, from our Spark Storybook Bible about the wise men coming, and then we will come back and talk. Wise Men On a cool, clear evening, three wise men looked into a night sky and saw a bright star. The wise men had been waiting for someone important to come to the world. They were waiting for a king. They knew the star was a sign from God. The star is a sign that the king has been born, the shortest one said. We should follow the star and find him, the tallest one said. I'll pack our bags, the middle one said. They left their homes and traveled far to meet this new baby king. They wanted to worship him and give him gifts. Along the way, they stopped and visited King Herod, the ruler of that land. We are following the star to find the baby king, they told King Herod. Do you know where he is? When King Herod heard that a baby king had been born, he was afraid. He thought the baby would grow up and take over. 
then Herod wouldn't be king anymore. So King Herod spoke to the wise men. He pretended to be nice. Herod told the wise men, I would like to meet the new baby. Why don't you go find him and come back here and tell me where he is? Then I can go worship him too. The wise men kept following the star to find the baby. They finally found Jesus, Mary, and Joseph in Bethlehem. They were quiet and so they wouldn't wake baby Jesus. They nailed beside his bed. He was so tiny. They kissed his little cheek. Sleep well, little one, they said, and they left him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They were very expensive gifts. They were gifts fit for a king. Later, the wise men decided it was time to go home. They were planning to tell King Herod where they found baby Jesus, but God sent an angel to talk to them in a dream. The angel told them that King Herod was dangerous, so they went home a different way instead. Jesus was indeed a new baby king who surprised the wise men and frightened King Herod. Jesus was God's promise, born for us, a gift to all people. The wise men are an awesome part of our story. They show a lot of strength and a lot of courage. They traveled for many, many weeks to a different country to find the baby who was lying under that star. I don't know if I would have done that if I just saw a new star in the sky. What about you? Would you try, if you saw or found a new bright star in the sky, would you travel for weeks to see what it meant? I wonder. They also on their journey met King Herod who they didn't trust. They knew he would hurt Jesus. And they actually made a decision to not tell King Herod where Jesus was, which is really, really brave considering King Herod had a lot of power in those days. They chose to protect Jesus and not themselves. That's pretty awesome. Today, we are going to do a craft on constellations. So I'm going to turn the camera around and show you how that is done. So today we are going to make some constellation projectors. So you will need a paper tube of some sort. We have toilet paper, a pair of scissors, some needles, which you will need your parents help with, and some tape. I have some constellations here. I will post the link or you can get creative and uh, make your own. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut out one of the constellations. I think we have Perusis. I don't actually know how to say that. And what you're going to do is really carefully with the pin and again, get your mom or dad's help here or an adult, I should say. And you're going to poke kind of just a few holes into one of them. Um, try to poke them close together and then you can just move the needle around just a little bit to get that hole. So I've done the other ones, but you can see how I kind of made those holes from that end. And you just want to make sure the light will be able to get through. Then you're going to take your toilet paper tube and you are just going to tape, making sure not to cover up the holes, that um, constellation on top. Now you will also need a flashlight. A lot of phones have flashlights, just so you know. So that would be something to use. And I will show you how this works. Okay, so I found a dark space. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your flashlight, which I have a phone here. You're going to take your constellation and you're going to put it over the flashlight into your constellation. And then when you project it onto the wall, you will see your constellation and your stars. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun learning about the wise men and their journey and about stars. Have a great week and happy new year. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. 
Of this gospel I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things, so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom he has access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Good morning and welcome to St. David's on this day when we celebrate the epiphany of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our gospel reading appointed for epiphany is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star in its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened in all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, For so it has been written by the prophet that you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. And Herod secretly called the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star, that they had seen in its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On, on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warmed in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the Gospel of Christ. Would you please pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You know, this morning we celebrate the epiphany of our Lord. And as we do, I recall a couple of weeks ago reading on Facebook that we were going to have the merging of two planets, Saturn and Jupiter. And in their merging, which I believe was the first time in 1200 years that that has occurred, we were going to see the Bethlehem star. And while the weather was not necessarily cooperative with us, it's the symbolism of that star and the journeying of the three wise men or astrologers or magi as they are referred to that we talk about today. You see in the merging of, that, of those two planets, in the coming of what we have called the Bethlehem star, what we actually see is the merging of God with God's people witnessed here on earth not only by the star, but by the birth of Christ himself. You see, that event symbolizes for us the coming of God here among us, God among us, Emmanuel. And so on this day, we celebrate that great journey that was taken by the three wise men, the astrologers, the Magi, as they traveled to pay homage and to glorify our Savior. It's interesting because that story for me represents 
almost a countercultural experience for us, particularly as North Americans. You see, we, more than ever, live in a world where people cling to absolute power, where people will do almost anything not to fall out of favor or power with the people that they are entrusted in looking after. And so it was with Herod. Herod the king was entrusted with the care of so many of the people of Israel, and yet, and yet, in his quest and journey to hang on to absolute power, he had asked the wise men, the Magi, to inform him of where the Savior had been born. And we know that he did this for less than positive reasons, that his heart was cold and hardened to the presence of God among his people. And so what we have in the story is this struggle between two wills, the will of one man to cling on to power and the will of God to unite himself to all of his creation. You know, this journey where these three travelers travel from a great distance in the east, we are told, in order to worship God represents for us what we as Christians do in our own spiritual journeys. You see, we are called to bigger things, not to the things of this world or those things that people uh, attribute so much uh, wealth and success to and give such great importance to. No, we are called to another vision. We are called to understand the importance of this great event that took place over 2,000 years ago where God unites himself to his people. You see, it's interesting that in this story, the three wise men, as they travel and encounter Herod, ignore the demands and requests of the kings and rulers and powerful of this world, but instead focus themselves on that star, the star which in its uniting brings God to his people. And so their purpose, their vision is much greater than that of those who are looking at things from that other perspective. They are more interested in seeing the bigger picture, the picture, the picture that we find in the event that will change the world forever. This journey uh, towards the Savior is not just their journey, but our journey. We are called to focus our senses, our lives, uh, the things, our actions, our thoughts, everything that we do to follow the will of God in which we are called to be united to him through our Lord Jesus Christ, understanding what it means to be a Christian, the way in which we live our lives. And so we are called not to focus on the minute things, the things that are temporal, that are temporary, that are of this world, but we are to focus on that great relationship that we celebrated on Christmas morning when we came to the realization that that birth, the birth of Christ, would change our lives forever. This is the story of Epiphany. It is a great journey, a journey in which all of mankind from every nation is called together in order to worship and glorify God. Now I know that we are going through very difficult times and here we are again, uh, locked down for an unknown period of time. But I want you to focus your hearts and your prayers and thoughts on greater things. This too shall pass and we will return to some form of normalcy, whatever that may be when the time comes. But what never changes is our love for God and God's love for us. And we witness it in the uniting of the planets. We witness it in that star. We witness it in the journey of the Magi as they travel towards our Savior. We are called to travel towards him. We are called to open up our hearts and minds and our prayers to God each and every day. And by doing so, we, we see the bigger picture, the picture in which we are united once and for all to our God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I wish you all 
a happy, healthy, and safe new year. I hope that God's blessings shine upon you abundantly and that you always know how truly loved you are. And I want to finish today, today with the collect for the day. And that collect is the one which is appointed for epiphany. So let us open our minds, our hearts, as we pray together. Eternal God, who by a star wise men were led to worship your Son, guide by your light the nations of the earth, that the whole world may know your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May God bless you, keep you safe, and we will be returning next week with our spiritual communion service. Until then, please stay healthy and safe.